You probably know about DNA, the molecule that contains all the genetic information of any living organism. Think of it as a kind of instructions for the cell. Now, a genome is a complete set of all the DNA found in an organism, and parts of the genome that code for proteins are called genes. And now, the process of reading these genes to create proteins is called gene expression. But genetic factors aren't the only things that play a large role in gene expression. So what else does? Something called epigenetics. If this was a DNA molecule, the epigenome refers to all the chemical compounds and proteins that are found surrounding the DNA strand that help regulate what it can be used for. For example, let's say this is one creepy looking protein. The big thing with epigenetics is that these proteins or compounds silence or activate genes not by changing the sequence of the DNA, as in the nitrogen spaces, but instead by altering its structure. In other words, epigenetics is the study of changes in gene expression that does not involve changes with the actual DNA sequence. Now one important epigenetic mechanism is called DNA methylation. Suppose this is a gene that is currently being read by a protein called RNA polymerase. DNA methylation is the process in which small molecules called methyl groups attach to specific areas in the DNA backbone. By doing so, they force the chromatin to curl tighter and condense, making it harder for the genetic information to be accessed. Eventually, enough methyl groups can turn off or silence the gene. You can also think of it like this. The genome is an SAP book, and methyl tags are paper clips. If you paper clip some pages together, then you can't read the pages in between, even though the actual pages of the original book haven't changed. But what happens now that you can't read portions of the book? You fail. Okay, maybe not fail, but your outcome would still change. Similarly, methyl tags can express and silence different genes, which changes the proteins that they end up coding for. But again, the original DNA sequence did not change, just like how the contents of this book did not. So why does all this matter? These epigenetic modifications come in handy in many different life processes, such as cell differentiation. For example, Brain cells act and look very differently from muscle cells, although they both contain the same set of genes, because different genes are being expressed. It's also important to know that epigenetic changes can happen relatively often and can be triggered by things such as exercise, diet, and stress. Although not as well known as other fields such as genetics, epigenetics is also a very important aspect of biology. Thank you guys for watching.